is we, we are out here in a wheat field this wheat field has already been harvested it's uh wheat doesn't have a real long window when it's from when it's ripe to when it needs to be harvested so we harvest it as soon as it uh, is ripe which basically means that it gets down to the right moisture content to store long term this particular field we grow all different kinds of wheat here on azure farm this particular field is uh, soft white wheat and here's a few stray heads that the combine miss so I will um, you know show you what it looks like so if I just thrash a little bit of that out All right, so that is one head's worth of wheat. As you can see, it is soft white wheat. This is what would be used to make uh, pancakes, muffins, cakes, pretty much anything that uh, you would use baking powder for and, or uh, baking soda instead of yeast. Yeast uh, breads, you usually want to use a hard wheat. So either a hard red or a... Um, hard white but this is uh this is the the good stuff and of course uh you know we can um just chaw on it too it's pretty good stuff so there you go <laughs> but anyway wheat has been is the staff of life it's been part of our culture of part of what we have eaten since civilization began. In fact, many folks will say that wheat was what started civilization. The ability to grow wheat, it was so important that civilizations were built around wheat. But we look at wheats and what are modern wheats versus the ancient wheats. Now, there's, there are several ancient wheats. There's one that we still grow a lot of. We, have, we grow a lot of einkorn. Einkorn is one of the first ancient wheats. There's also spelt, which is at least 2,000 years old, if not a little bit older. More, probably more like three or 4,000 years old. And then we have <clears throat> the modern wheats, which descended from the, the einkorns and from the uh, triticum family. So modern wheats before the last well since the 50s before that modern wheats are fairly tall growing you can see even this once it's already been harvested you know this grew about so high this was harvested you cut off the half top half of the of the wheat um, and this is not the tallest growing wheat the ain't the older heirlooms grew even taller but when they begin to introduce modern farming methods, particularly anhydrous ammonia fertilizer, which was developed originally as a hardener for aircraft fields in the war, they um, started trying to use it on wheat to get a better yield. It didn't work so good because the wheat got too tall and it would tip over and it wouldn't stand up so the yield wouldn't, or and the kernels would shrivel. So if you look at a under mature wheat like this i'm just guessing we look at that there you go there is very little in there because that one actually droughted out we we had kind of a dry year this year even though our wheat did pretty good you can see the tiny little shriveled kernels in that little sucker wheat that didn't uh, have enough moisture to finish So it's real, real small and, and stunted. So what happens is that the wheat doesn't, you know, it doesn't fully mature. And so it will have a higher protein content. If you put that in your mouth and chew it, we, uh, and the farm here, we call that um, wheat gum. The gluten actually makes gum in your mouth after a while. So um, the the wheat itself uh, was growing too tall so they couldn't use anhydrous ammonia they couldn't increase the yields much it was all pretty much standard um, so they came up with this great idea that you would they would 
hybridize or breed the wheats down to a shorter breed, a shorter variety. So by doing that, they were able to make it shorter so it had less leverage on it and a little bit tougher stock. And so then they were able to put large amounts or fairly large amounts of anhydrous ammonia on the wheat. Hydrous ammonia is a nitrogen fake. So basically what it does is it makes the grain think that it has more nitrogen than it really does. Nitrogen is the growth regulator of all, pretty much all plants. Very few exceptions to that. Um, so the wheat thinks that it has all kinds of nutrients in it because it has all this extra nitrogen that it's being faked out to think that it has. So it grows bigger and taller and puts on more grain. The problem is that there aren't all the rest of the nutrients there to support that. The microbes and stuff that are supposed to help the nitrogen be created will create the other nutrients as well, but when you're faking it out with anhydrous ammonia, that's not there. So the wheat begins to mature. The very first protein to um, form is the L-glutamine. So L-glutamine is an amino acid. It's part of the protein chain. You know, in, in our bodies, to be healthy, we need some 23 amino acids. Uh, wheat should have eight or nine good, strong amino acids in wheat. That, once they started using anhydrous and pushing the wheat to grow more mass, the wheat did not, was not able to have the rest of the nutrients needed to finish to complete those amino acid chains. So even though the wheat was showing somewhere upward 12 to 14% protein content, most of that was all L-glutamine. So eventually, people began to develop intolerances to L-glutamine. You get, you're eating bread or wheat or what in any kind of anything made out of wheat and you're getting 14 percent of that as just pure l-glutamine without the other amino acid chains the body has to pull the amino acids from somewhere else to fill out that amino acid chain or it's not going to make muscle guaranteed so it pulls out pulls those amino acids from other places and eventually it gets deficient and once it gets deficient it says ah no more l-glutamine done 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 and then you get wheat intolerance. And once that gets bad enough, you get celiac disease. And so my belief is that that is the primary cause of wheat intolerance. So a couple things you can do, eat only certified organic product that can't, um, they can't use anhydrous ammonia on. And number two, even better, one step better, use the ancient grains that they couldn't use it on if they wanted to because it wouldn't do any good. Use, chemo, you know, anhydrous ammonia on at least. So look at using einkorn, spelt, um, kamut, some of those ancient grain products that have, um, that are more, um, that can't be fertilized into excess yields. Now, most farmers, at least in this area, they use an extra pound on every acre of anhydrous ammonia for every bushel of wheat yield that they think they're going to get. And so they base that on how much moisture it looks like that year is going to give. Um, because if it, you know, if the, if the wheat realizes it's got too much anhydrous before the moisture content, when the moisture content becomes too low, it will what we call burn out and then they won't get a good yield at all. So that's kind of the balancing act that the conventional guys do. But remember, uh, the uh, balanced amino acids, the balance in the food is exactly where it's at. In much of the wheat growing region of the US, not so much here, but where it's a little bit further north where most of the bread wheat is um, grown, the wheat doesn't ripen real evenly because there's wet spots and drier spots and the ground is not real even. And so they go in and spray Roundup or some other form of glyphosate right onto the wheat, right when it's getting ripe to uh, make, the, make it die. And so then it all dries more evenly so they can combine it more easily. Well, guess what? 
that's going right onto the raw grain. It's an absolute straight on. Well, what does glyphosate do? It inhibits the uptake of minerals. That's how it kills plants. It stops it from being able to uptake minerals. Um, and so the plant dies from disease, usually fusarium wilt. It's not dying necessarily from the spray that they're putting on there. It's dying from fusarium wilt because the uptake of minerals has been blocked. Well, guess what it does to the microbes that are in our body? When we're eating that grain that's just had glyphosate sprayed on it, we're eating that. Guess what minerals get them, you know, blocked in the uptake? So talk about insult to injury. One, you have, you know, incomplete amino acid chains that make the body work super hard to get to fill out those uh, amino acid chains. And then you have um, mineral uptake blockers on that grain. And then we wonder why celiac disease is on the rise and why people can't eat wheat regularly and they get sick from eating wheat. There's, there's more to the story. It's not wheat. It's what we've done to wheat. It's how we've raised wheat. That's, uh, you know, that's where the, the real difference is.